erectile dysfunction is the consistent and persistent inability to obtain an erection uh, that is satisfactory for sexual activity. We estimate that approximately 30 million men suffer from erectile dysfunction in the United States. There are many causes of erectile dysfunction, but the most common cause are diabetes, high blood pressure, tobacco smoking, high cholesterol levels, and of course, any pelvic surgery or treatment for pro uh, prostate cancer, such as radiation, uh, robotic prostatectomy, uh, any surgeries of the bladder that involves removal of the bladder for cancer, and also uh, any low uh, anterior resection of uh, colonic uh, cancers, for example. And also we see uh, unusual causes such as scleroderma, uh, systemic uh, fibrosis, or also lupus. And of course we have patients that uh, have uh, sickle cell trait or sickle cell anemia who have repeated uh, uh, bouts of priapism, which causes scarring and fibrosis of the penis. In order to make a diagnosis of erectile dysfunction, one needs to have a complete history, and that's really important, a physical exam, and then there are specialized studies such as a penile injection test, a penile injection test coupled with a duplex Doppler ultrasonography, which is a very good test that uh, evaluates the ability of the penis to receive blood through the arteries as well as trap blood into the penis during an erection and diagnose uh, whether or not the patient has a venous leak. And then there are other uh, tests which are rarely performed, such as sleep studies, uh, biotisiometry, which tests the nerves, and then uh, very elaborate tests, which we used to do back in the 80s, such as dynamic infusion, cavernosography and cavernosometry. This is a mouthful, but it basically involves injecting dye into the penis, provoking an erection with a rapid infusion of fluid and seeing whether or not there's fluid leaking out of the penis during an erection. And then at the end, doing x-rays to determine whether or not there is a single part of the penis which leaks blood back into the circulation. We used to do these tests when we were contemplating doing venous ligation, which is no longer a procedure that is performed because of its lack of success. Erectile dysfunction can be prevented or delayed by maintaining a healthy lifestyle, making sure that one doesn't eat fatty food or have a diet with an excessive amount of carbohydrates, Exercising is extremely important. Avoiding tobacco smoking are things that uh, men can do. Men who exercise have firmer erection. That is uh, well documented. In addition, men who keep themselves trim and fit and ha have a low uh, carbohydrate uh, diet and a low cholesterol diet uh, seem to maintain their erectile function longer in their uh, age. One of the benefits of seeing a specialist for the treatment of erectile dysfunction is to have available all the different options to get a full evaluation and also to uh, look into um, what are the causes of erectile dysfunction. For example, if a patient has undiagnosed diabetes, a specialist is more likely to make that diagnosis or make the diagnosis of prediabetes and impact a man's overall health. There are many treatment options for erectile dysfunction, including lifestyle changes, oral therapy, and medications that are inserted directly into the penis, either with a needle, uh, such as Cavaject or Edex, uh, or uh, with the urethral suppositories, and then vacuum erection device, and then penile implants. Every patient is different and it's important uh, to take a complete history and a physical examination before determining which treatment is the right treatment for that individual patient. Well, of course, we wanna have the treatment that is the least intrusive and most effective with the least amount of side effects. And 
we also want to take into account the patient's age, patient's uh, ability to uh, use a device or perform a penile injections, and the patient's uh, marital status, as well as uh, other underlying medical conditions. In general, patients are extremely satisfied with uh, many of the different treatment options for erectile dysfunction. Approximately 80 to 90% of patients will initially respond to oral therapy and are very satisfied with uh, that option. For men who do not respond to oral therapy, I find that most are extremely satisfied with either penile self-injections or a penile implant. The satisfaction for patients who have a penile implant is through the roof. Over 95% of our patients are extremely satisfied with the use in, uh, uh, of a penile implant. The long-term consequences of not having erections goes well beyond the bedroom. And that is something that is very difficult for patients who don't have erectile dysfunction. It's difficult for a patient's partner, a lady, to appreciate. When a man has erectile dysfunction, that's all he thinks about. He thinks about it while he's at work. He thinks about it whether he's uh, commuting to work and listening to the radio and listening to uh, hearing a romantic voice, watching a romantic movie, he thinks about erectile dysfunction. So what it does is it constant fatigue of a person's brain. And I learned that from my patients. Patients who get a penile uh, implant, for example, the first thing out of their mouth is, I feel so free. I don't know what to think about. It's not about sex, it's not about having a firm erection. It's freeing a person from the shackles of erectile dysfunction.